It didn't succeed, they didn't adapt to the different climates. But I'm going to turn now, I'm proud to say that this sheet can be found throughout the world, which is widely used as a cross-breeding sheet for our quality to look good at the meat. Okay, the next sheet that comes up off the stage, we need to just set the scene here. And about 250 years ago, the farmers brought the South Down ships up from the South Downs up into East Anglia. But well, one night, there was a bit of a day, uh, these two sheep escaped. They came up in the woods, the moon was in the sky, and a love child was produced. And that love child is Sam the Zuffer. Come on, Sam. Come on, Sam. Come on, Sam. Now, as you can see here, as you can see here, he's taken on traits from the parents. He's a lot. So he's got the black head, he's got the black legs, he's got the long body, there's a lot of horns, a lot of wire, and he's taken that off from the south down. So he's got the size of the length from the old horn and the broadness from the uh, south down there. Now this supper sheep. He's now known as a terminal sire, and basically that means that uh, he's used for his meat qualities. The supper, uh, the supper to meat matures very, very quickly. Okay? So basically that means it doesn't take very long to get to the bottom. Okay, but this fella here, because of the qualities he's taken on from the uh, south down and the north uh, port, uh, that's been recognised in the meat world, and he is used as a terminal sire. Uh, widely used throughout. They're quite hard work, but they still do use hand shears in remote areas where they can't find electricity and take vacuum machines and things like that. They take a pair of hand shears, get a sheep in, and they shear their sheep. Now, it's in places where it gets hot during the day, but it's still gets really cold at night. There are also places where they use hand shears because you need to have a sentimental wall of the sheep. So they stay nice and warm as well as a warm during the day and nice and warm at night when it gets really these needles here, it just takes the wool away from the sheep. I run it up the back of my arm there, see, no cuts, no scratches. Feels a bit like a vibrating feeling. So the sheep's actually quite like it. Now, I need a volunteer. Everybody knows what's coming next, don't they? For a haircut. Oh no, maybe not. I've only got one style and that's very, very short. Now you just be careful what you volunteer for next time. Okay. Now I've got a volunteer waiting back here for me to make them have a cup of coffee. Think of that where she could have gone on holiday. Um, hang on now, just before I get it out. Now I've got a wild sheep back here, capable of speed in excess of 30 miles an hour. Nine times out of ten when I open the gate, I catch it. Okay? <laughs> now if I don't, don't panic. All we need to do is just sit there and if it comes running towards the end of the stage, just go, Woof. Yeah, so we've got to practice that now. Ready? If the sheep comes across, just practice. Ready? Two, three. Woof. Oh, that'll do it. That'll stand <laughs> Okay, here we go. Oh, that's not Okay. 
nice if I love a lot of people. I can check out this one this book. And then I'll chop them off that man. It's a lower quality wall, but it still can be used. I like to make it uh, melt and stops and things like that. There we go, there we go. There we go. Okay, this method of shearing was pioneered by a Kiwi fella called Dr. Bowen. He travelled around New Zealand looking at many different styles and techniques of shearing and he put together his technique with a good one and it caught on and it's widely used now throughout the world. The record stands now around about 750 feet in an eight hour day with an electric shear. That works out roughly about 30 seconds per shear. Well, I'm not going to go that fast today. You would be able to see what was happening. I would have time to explain what we do. Now some people think this. Thank you. 